from abusing a pregnant woman. That's not gonna have anything to do with me, sweetheart. You drive me on the floor! To abrasive misconduct on an innocent civilian. Did you just hit me on my face? Buckle up for a wild ride through some disgusting law enforcement action. Disclaimer. In the rain-soaked streets of San Antonio, Officer Elizabeth J. Montoya unleashes a storm of brutality on a pregnant, handcuffed suspect, Kimberly Ann Esparza. You feel it when there's something there? Spread your legs. I heard I was running from these people, dude. Spread your legs. I'm not going to ask you again. Watch out, man! Don't do dude, it. You're my Don't be trying to my stuff either. And then grab it on you, dude. Let me the Oh, man. All you have to do is cooperate. You're hurting baby me. Hey, she's just you don't worry about wouldn't be out Thank you. You don't know or what taking to Xanax hey, either. You just oh, you're hurting my ass. Good. Ah! Ah! Do not kick me. Don't have a let her go. Do not ah! kick me. If you kick me again, I swear to God, I'll break your arm. Oh, In a shocking twist, Body cam footage captured Montoya's fists raining down on Esparza like a boxer in the ring. All you needed to do is spread your legs. Not my fault. I found drugs on you. I can't even speak. Well, Stand my up, shoulders, dude. Stand up. Get in. I, my, my arms hurt. My shoulders hurt. Uh, I don't take drugs. Yes, you do. That's why you had a Xanax in your bra. God, Julia, I'm gonna be stuck. God damn. It's not gonna have anything to do with me, sweetheart. You drive me on the floor! Watch out! Ah! 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 You punched me like 10 times on my Get on the ground. Please don't do this. Get on the ground. Chief William McManus, appalled by Montoya's inhumane treatment, delivered justice swiftly firing her from the force. But justice, it seems, is a fickle friend. A enraged activists who say the officer's response was inappropriate. Montoya hit the suspect, who was handcuffed inside a police car, at least seven times. Chief William McManus fired the officer soon after, but the arbitrator overruled that decision. That will be harder to do under a new contract between the city and the police union. Enter the arbitrator stage left, wielding the power to turn punishment into a mere slap on the wrist. Montoya's firing reduced to a 45-day vacation, a holiday from accountability sponsored by the police union. Chief William McManus decided that behavior was inhumane and fired her. But he didn't get the final say. It refuses the uh, chief the ability to hold his officers accountable. As Montoya's case shimmies through the bureaucratic dance, the chief finds himself hogtied by the ropes of arbitration. His authority diminished, like a deflated balloon at a birthday party. Using a clause in the city's last contract with the police union, an arbitrator reduced Montoya's firing to a 45-day suspension. If they know that they can commit egregious acts, and that his decision will not be respected, you cannot expect him to maintain order in that department, and you continue to see the, the results of that. So, as the curtain falls on this tale of corruption and consequence, let us remember one thing. The power of accountability is mighty, and karma catches up to you. But wait till you see the sobbing encounter of a young police officer who tried to lie her way out of everything. Too bad she was crying more than lying. But first, in a chaotic scene captured on video, Toledo police officer Ashlyn Pluff, yes, that Ashlyn Pluff, her behavior during an incident involving Olympic boxer O'Shea Jones raised eyebrows and ire alike. Pluff's abrasive demeanor and use of profanity towards Jones and others highlight a troubling trend of police misconduct. Imagine the scene. A bustling gathering in Toledo, alive with energy and anticipation, suddenly shattered by the arrival of law enforcement. The officer's approach was far from subtle, akin to a bull in a china shop, shoving and aggressively attacking people. You do? Yeah. All right. Why y'all coming so close? Arrest him, 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 and them too. Arrested. They're gonna leave. They're gonna arrest it. You don't leave, you don't arrest it. Watch out. Touch him. Don't touch me. I ain't do nothing to y'all. Why you pushing me off the porch? 
Put your hands behind your bed. What are you doing? What are you I'm doing recording you. You're not recording. You're going to jail. Our camera's recording for you. To me, we ain't doing nothing. Yeah, you're failing to disperse. What we you told mean? you to go in the house. You know, you're out here, run your mouth, what? and you're causing a scene. It's obstructing official I, business. I never said nothing. My in, goodness, you have to listen. Porch. If you just follow the rules, in his buddy porch. Gosh, I don't got it. Has nothing to do with that. You're not listening to me. His buddy porch, though. Seeing the bizarre situation, O'Shea Jones came to talk to the officers. As if that's not enough, Pluff decides to crank up the aggression dial even more, throwing around lies like confetti. I, I have no idea what was going on up on the porch. I was not involved in any of that stuff, so I, right? I can't he even was tell you. On the porch. I how, and that's what I have happened. I have no nothing. idea. I it's was I was not one of the arresting neighbors, officers. Just like everybody, oh. man, we're neighbors, just like everybody else. Things started to get heated as she asks about one of the people being arrested. And another officer tells her that he's been taken into custody and she can't talk to him. Right. Regardless, he's going down. You Girl, can't talk to him right now. He, he'll be out. What did he go down for? He was on the porch. He, he just told you. He we said a you know that! But wait, it gets worse. There's a woman with a kid caught up in the chaos, and Pluff's antics towards her are met with a chorus of gasps and disapproving stares from bystanders. O'Shea Jones simply wanted the arresting officer's badge number, but Toledo PD wanted drama. Everything's gonna be on the report. It's all yeah, public record. Just go in it's all room. public record. It's all gonna be on It's the all report. on there. Every officer that was here is gonna be on there. Every I officer. Oh, oh, It'll be on his court papers, arresting officer, officer, officer badge all number. of it. I asked for that. We don't know his badge right number. Yeah. You'd think Pluff would have a shred of compassion, but nope, she's too busy flexing her authority to care. What she did next was a clear abuse of power. The TPD handcuffed Jones and took her phone away too. You're hey, angry! Hey, Calm hey. down! You angry! Stop she's twisting. angry! Quit moving! Stop it! She just hit me! Y'all just see that? Anna! She just hit me! She just hit me! Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. She just hit me in my face! You see that? I got him, I got him, I got him. Right here, right here, right here. But here's the silver lining amidst all this madness. O'Shea Jones keeps her cool like the champ she is, refusing to let Pluff's antics ruffle her feathers. Talk about Grace under fire. They arrested her and placed her in the police cruiser to transport her. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's 355. Five. What car are you guys taking? Um, I have someone in mind. Alright, let's go Okay. In the end, Pluff's little episode earns her a stern talking to from the higher ups at the Toledo PD, who rightfully call her out for her lack of professionalism and conduct unbecoming of an officer. It's a wake-up call for law enforcement everywhere. Treat the public respectfully, or you might actually face consequences. From the chaotic Toledo streets, we move to the unsettling aftermath of an officer's DUI incident in Ocala and the consequences of abusing authority. Are you all right? Get up. You got hands for the work for us? On August 10th, 2018, former Ocala police officer Katie McDonald found herself in a whirlwind of trouble. It all started with a crash, a loud, unsettling collision that shattered the tranquility of the night. As the dust settled, Katie was nowhere to be found, disappearing into the darkness like a ghost fleeing from its own misdeeds. Everybody all right? I'm, I'm missing out my car. Who is it, you know? Who was in it? Which way did she go? Huh? She ran behind the tree. She ran behind this tree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're driving right behind the tree. You said driving around? No, she ran. The driver the ran behind the trees. So. Oh, this White girl, black girl? White, White girl. girl. I can see movement. But the officers on the scene weren't fooled by her disappearance. They knew she couldn't evade the consequences of her actions forever. Sure enough, Katie soon emerged from the shadows behind a tree, her eyes swollen with tears and her words muddled by fear. Did, any, did anybody see what happened? Did anybody see her in the car? No. Nobody saw her in the car? No? Okay. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Hey, you all right? Hello? Hey. Hey. Talk to us. What's your name? McDonald's. Are you all right? Get up. You got ants crawling over for us? You got ants crawling all over. I know, I know. 
Her story was as chaotic as the crash itself. She babbled about being chased, about unseen threats lurking in the night, but as the officers probed deeper, her facade crumbled like a sandcastle before the tide. What are you doing? What happened? <laughs> Where were they following you from? Okay. You all right? Why were you hiding behind the tree? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> the truth finally came out, revealing a grim reality. Katie was drunk, her judgment clouded by the very substance she was sworn to protect others from. I just need to ask a few questions. Hey, hey. Um, from what I got so far, that you were in the mountains and someone was chasing you or something? Yeah, they were. They wouldn't let me leave. So, where were you heading out on the road? <laughs> I was trying to leave. How'd you end up in the pool? They were following me. And I fell and I crashed into the pool. And when I got out, I ran out and they were gone. As the sobriety tests unfolded, it became painfully clear that Katie's badge was no shield against the actual law. She stumbled through the field sobriety exercises. Her coordination is shaky as her excuses. All right, I'm going to ask you to do field sobriety exercises. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I want you to follow your eyes and your eyes only. Don't move your head, okay? Now let's get you to step out here for me, okay? See the white line? All right. You see the white line you have in front of you here? You have sandals on. Would you like to take those off? Whatever is more comfortable for you. And when the breathalyzer confirmed her intoxication, there was no denying the damning evidence. <laughs> You are being placed under arrest for driving on the influence of an alcoholic beverage or any substance set forth in Chapter 893. Under Florida law, you are required to submit the law of test to your breath for the purpose of determining alcohol content. Will you submit to a breath test? Yes? Okay. I take a good breath. And blow. Don't stop Taipei. In the end, Katie's badge became a tarnished symbol of her downfall. Her actions not only betrayed the trust of her fellow officers, but also endangered the lives of innocent civilians. She was a cautionary tale, a reminder that even those tasked with upholding the law are not above it. And as Katie was led away in handcuffs, her career in law enforcement came crashing down, kind of like the wreckage of her car. As this woman's career burns, we segue into a reckless escapade where one's entitlement and refusal to comply with sobriety tests was the reason for her doom. I could get out, I could get in, I mean, you can come in. In the dead of night, the streets of St. Petersburg become a stage for Deputy Shelby Elise Coniglio's reckless performance. Pulled over for speeding, her badge became her prop. Her entitlement, the script. But Officer Kristen Higgins wasn't buying tickets to the show. Coniglio's do you know who I am routine fell pretty flat. Slurred speech and bloodshot eyes weren't part of her badge. Yet she chose to flaunt those too. Do you have your some kind of ID or anything on you? My ID is not here, but I'm a Pinellas County deputy. Okay. Do you have some kind of ID on you? I was just driving that way. I dropped my friend off and then I went this way because my I live right there. I get that, but I pulled you over because you were flying past everybody and you were cut. No, I was just driving Okay, when I was pulling behind way. you, at this point you were going like 56 and a 40. You're showing signs of impairment. I want to No, give I'm you not showing. Okay. All right, I want to give you every opportunity to show you know that's not I, I want to ask, uh -huh. what signs of impairment was I showing? You've got bloodshot, watery eyes, you have slow Nope, speech. nope. Okay. I want to know. Okay. Pulling over. Pulling over, what was the signs of impairment? I'm not gonna. Because I do not have bloodshot, watery eyes, because I have contact lenses in my eyes. 
Okay. I have contact yeah. lenses. I'm, I'm not trying to argue with you, okay? I want, I'm hoping that you can show me that you're, that you're okay to drive. Refusing sobriety tests was her encore, but Higgins was not applauding. With precision, she orchestrated the dance of justice, leading Coniglio through the steps that she so desperately tried to dodge or stumble through. I explained to you, you, you smell very strongly of alcohol. Your movements have been very slow and fumbling. You have a very dazed facial expression. All these are signs of, of impairment. Okay. Again, if you're good to drive, perfect. But that's, I have to, I have to investigate that. No, you have to go over it again. I am showing what exactly? You have bloodshot, watery eyes. You have slurred speech. You have a strong but I'm wearing odor. contact lenses. Okay. You have a strong odor of alcohol coming from your breath. But I'm wearing, I have. Okay. All right. As I said, I'm just conducting an investigation at this point. I want to give you every opportunity. You're saying that you're, that you're fine. I want to give you every opportunity to show me that. Do you, are you wearing contacts right now, you said? I am wearing contact okay. lenses, and I cannot take them out. That's fine. You don't, do you have blindness in either eye? I don't know. Uh, I mean, can you see the this light? Yeah. Okay. All well, I have you to do is just stand your feet together and arms down at your sides. Just stay in that position. Don't move until I tell you to begin. Now. When I tell you to begin, you're going to take nine heel-to-toe steps down the line, okay? But the breathalyzer doesn't lie, revealing a BAC soaring higher than the city's skyline. Coniglio's badge did not grant immunity from the law's reach, and her ride to the station was perhaps a sobering reminder. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him or her present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you. You can decide any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand these rights as I read them to you? Yes. Body cameras and public outcry exposed the truth, and Coniglio's fall from grace was as swift as it was well-deserved. 